Okay. And after recording, I need to share the screen. Screen one. Check. All right. So after opening your software, you will need to do obviously new page by clicking on new there. Right? And then yeah. Oh, yeah, I did as you did there. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then under pneumatic. Hey. Come on. Under pneumatic, we have the supply elements, compressor, SFS unit. These are the common stuff that we use. I'll, I drag, as you see, you drag and drop items you want, and you start from your far left on the bottom there because you build everything going up. So this component is an SFS unit. In hydraulics, the system is, is a vacuum, for instance. You cannot leak air in hydraulics. Why? Because the moment hydraulics breathe or exhaust air, it means they will exhaust the, new, uh, the hydraulic fluid. Yeah? So you can't exhaust in hydraulics. But in pneumatics, you need to release the air. So now pneumatics, they have to breathe. So you compress air, then you pump it into, into the, the, your, your, your pneumatic component. So as part of generating that pneumatic air, you find that you, at some point, I don't know, you guys would know these things, air can turn into water. We know that again. I think if you are heating it up or something like that, then yeah, something like that. You know, you guys know. So now we need a, a system like this one, air service unit. It filters that water, it filters dust, then it only let clean air to go to your pneumatic component. I have it here. This thing normally I have to push it there so that I can incorporate the use of the, the the camera but i'll push it later not now okay so now we know the purpose of this and then the compressor now a, a portable compressor over here and its job is to uh, 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 generate that air to to compress the air for us okay and one of the features, one of one of the the stuff you can experience, you see here. I've closed my my menu here, so one will think that the menu is gone. Yeah, it's a common problem students face, and sometimes it can happen in a class, and a student just you know keep quiet and until they can't do anything. Because when it's like this, you, you you've lost almost control of that. So you just need to come here and you restore, you see this one, restore down, then that will come. And even if it happens that you mistakenly minimize, even if it happens that you mistakenly minimize, you can still be able to reduce this one and you'll see your, 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 your work there and you can bring it back. So that is very important because of, it brings a challenge. It brings a challenge for students, especially during tests. That's when these problems come up. When in fact is nothing happens, but when I say just write, that it, it tends to be a common thing that normally happens, right? So these are the two elements that we normally use. 
and then connecting them together, you just drag from this one to that one and it will connect, all right? So now we've done with, with our, our supply element. Now our actuators, we have a double acting cylinder, single acting cylinder and a ruler. Let me get some components. Double acting cylinder looks like this. I'm not getting feedback from people who are viewing me if they can hear me. Can I get feedback, please, guys? QK, wherever you are. And one guy will never tell you that attendance is it's compulsory. I don't work with that. What is compulsory is for you to practice in order for you to pass. Simple as that. If you decide to fail, you won't practice. So now, this is our double acting cylinder. You induce air. Oh, no. Only the, the, the guys on can see. Wow. Then I'm going to this. So, you induce air both sides. But a single acting cylinder, you induce air from one side. Ne? So it has a spring inside. So if you pull it, oops, if I pull it, I let it go, it comes back. This one, if you pull it, and nothing happens, as you can see. Nothing. Ah, uh, wait, no. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're breaking now. So. If I pull it and nothing happens, basically, because it works with the double acting cylinder. You induce air this side, then it will extend, and induce air this side, then it will retract. Although, the common principle of this one, once it's at its retracted end position, uh, the language matters. Now we use extended end position and retracted end position. We never consider any center for the purpose of our lab. So we can't say it must extend 50%. No, it was always in both ends. Yeah? So keep that in mind. I'll never say it must stop or at the center. So most of the time, cylinders must be at their end retracted position. And they need to be uh, compressed to be there. Yeah? So for instance, if say this it's a product that you need to push out. So it moves somewhere here. Yeah? So it comes and you need to push it out out of the, uh, the, 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 the conveyor belt, then you retract. It's not safe for a cylinder not to go to its end retracted position because you find that if you don't make sure that it, it goes to its end retracted position then now it will block their product basically as they come uh, on, on the on the on the conveyor belt so normally by default after you start up everything there will be air on this one coming in to push it and to make it to remain to its initial position so there's air that you need to induce. So by its, it, its default, it remains on this position. This one, it has a spring return. The spring makes sure that it remains at its own position. Although, let me teach extra stuff. If we were to use sensors, with sensors, we have sensors that can wrap around these cylinders. The sensors are rich switches or they are magnetic sensors. So you can decide when these things should stop or should end. So what happened is you place a sensor maybe here and then it will sense the, 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 the rod inside because the, the, the base of the rod is magnetic. 
it will sense where it is positioned. Then when it gets there, it will follow the 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 the, the command based on your your electromagnetic circuit or your PLC. So we're doing electromagnetics so that we can level up to PLCs. That's why I start here. So that you can understand the process of actuation, sensing, and stuff like that. Right? So let me go back to my screen now. This one must be that side. Can you can text me? I can't hear you and I don't know why. Let me check. I can see your mic is working properly. Uh, is that, is that, it's a sound system there working. You can use the text to reply. Let me let me let me check if my speakers maybe there's a problem with my speakers. Uh, which speaker is this now? Uh, which sound am I using? Ah, this one on web. Can you? Can you? Hey, this thing creates a feedback on my side. Nah, it's fine for me. As long as you guys can hear there, me, I'm so tight. All right, so we've covered the the two components here, but we haven't covered the ruler. The ruler is something that doesn't exist, guys. I'm not sure that, yeah, it doesn't exist. So because we're using a software and you want to locate your exact position, then they embedded a ruler inside the software. But in real life, you would use your normal measuring tape to position your sensor. Say, for instance, you know how, how, how how the shaft, how long the shaft is of the, the cylinder body. Then you would measure half of it using a measuring tape. Then you put a sensor there, then it will be able to uh, mitigate around that, that position. Okay? So when you do physical, let's, let's do the sensor. I think I do have an example of that here. Position of the sensor. Where is my map? Although I do have a Let's go on the camera again. How do I do this? So the sensor comes and wrap up here, wrap, wraps itself around. And then, obviously, being a mechanical engineer, you should be knowing how to do the measurements and stuff like that. So you measure the position of that sensor using a manual uh, thingy. So the, the size the size of the the shaft it's equivalent to its rod. Yeah? Okay. What is this, the body, guys? Yeah, help. The cylinder what? Cylinder body or yeah that's a cylinder cylinder? Just a cylinder. And then the cylinder rod. Yeah, this one is a rod. This one I know it's a rod. Or a shaft. Yeah. Okay. So the cylinder body, you it's the size of the cylinder body is equivalent to the the size of your rod when it's fully extended. So why is it important to have the positioning of or to measure the specific positioning of the sensor itself? Like why why can't you just put it at the center? Yeah, okay. Measuring it okay with the sensors, yeah. 
the aim is let's say i want this to go to the center the rod to to end its its resting position should be the center then i would have to measure according to 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 the size of of the cylinder body then i position my sensor at the center then the center remember the sensor is a magnetic sensor and the base of the rod is also a magnetic so it's a magnet actually then once it's at the center here it will detect that this is on the center then let's say maybe you, you, your your aim is i don't want the cylinder to extend like when you spec for instance you know that products are not equal uh, uh, or the conveyor belt that you're going to use is not equal then you buy you mistakenly buy bigger cylinders for instance then when they when they are fully extended basically they are like they've surpassed the 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 the, 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 the specifications of your conveyor belt and wherever the location where they must go they are quite too long for instance so you don't need to cut the shaft because you're gonna mess up. So you 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 will you will be uh, encouraged to use the the the, the read switch, or the read sensor, or the magnetic sensor, and position it according. Say for instance, you want it when it when it reaches the center to stop. So it will move, and when it reaches the the center here, then it will stop moving. Sometimes you want it to fully extend. But only when it retracts, it's ended at the center. Then it will end at the center. But remember, I said that we don't use centers. We only do fully retracted and fully extended. Although, sometimes you need to confirm that your system is fully extended. So then that's why we have the sensor being able to move around. There are questions where I will say, Confirm whether the system is fully extended. Say, for instance, once it's fully extended, I want this one to extend as well. So that's the whole idea. And then when this one is fully extended, I want both of them to retract. Then they will retract both of them. Sometimes I say to you, I want to confirm my end and retracted position before I can extend. Then you confirm it, then you then extend after the confirmation. So if it happens that the, the, your, your, your system is not fully retracted, the system must not operate for safety purposes. So it means that something is blocking it from, 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 from operating properly. So I mustn't forget to always share the screen. I tend to forget very easily. Right, so let's go under valves. Under valves, we have mechanically operated valves. Yeah. I'm not going to use the metal because they are manually operated valves. We are using uh, uh, we are using these buttons here. Okay, the ones at home, the ones here. So we are using electrical buttons because we are doing electro pneumatics. No, 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 not valves. Valves, yeah, I'm crazy. On the valve side, there are two different types of valves. Uh, there's this one and there's this one. Right. This one are on switches, my mistake. So we can have to demonstrate these things, but yeah, I have to. Don't want you to be asking yourself silly questions when you're at home. So, you see this one? It's a pneumatical, it's a valve. Its job is to open for the air, né? to let the air pass. And then it's, 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 it's controlled through electric circuit. So air comes here, electricity comes here, and then it decides whether to open which valve here between the two valves. And then once it's a pneumatically controlled valve, it becomes like this. Everything here is controlled by air because it becomes pneumatically controlled valve. All right? So 
Now, there are also push buttons in the form of valves. So here, we have a mechanically operated uh, uh, valve. So you press mechanically without any intervention of uh, electricity involved. Then it will work. Then when we go to electrical, we have push buttons that are connected on a 24 volt system. So these are for electrical purposes, and this is what we are doing. Okay. Put them back. Uh, to this. Right. So pneumatically, these are pneumatically operated valves. We don't use them much, but they you can still use them. Otherwise, we use the electric ones, the solenoid valves. Otherwise, we use the solenoid valves, right? And we have also the shut off valves. Sometimes you need to make a decision and end gate, you know, end gate, series gate, and we have a parallel gate as well. So whereby you say if either this or that, you know, sometimes you say this and that, you know. So yeah, so the shut off valves over here, and we have the power suppliers. We have the measuring instrument sensors. We have the relays, and we have the switch. On the relays, on the switches, we have. These are uh, the switches. Uh, let's see. Ah, we don't have description. The switches are actually that the, the switch board that I just showed you now. So that's where your buttons are. Yeah. The switches and stuff like that. So this is all our component that we use under this electron pneumatics. So. Let's see how we tackle the questions now. If normally, the first question is, uh, is this, what you call this, uh, a, a single acting cylinder. So, where's my book? Let me look for my book quickly. I can't see it. It's fine. Let me download it. All right. And I download and I want to download the memos as well. Normally, I don't give memos first day. It's because I like it. I like it. Day. Not clean, open. Right. As you can see, there are nine exercises. When we get to the ninth one, we hold a test. Okay, my piece is fading. Let me give it two seconds, Yana, to to sober up. I'm completely lost, wrong with me. I'm not believing. I'm bored. All right. Mm. 
Yes. These are the cost. It's not a problem. I should have used the online thing since this day. Uh, where are my tests here? The thing is, you can't highlight online, you see? That's why I normally prefer online. Uh, I prefer offline. So, in this exercise, you, you'll be able to set a single cylinder, obviously. You know how it works now. And you'll be required to set up a, a three-two-way bell, solenoid bell. And you should be able to understand what is called a directional control. And you will understand what is direct actuation. The moment we talk about something, you mean it means there must be no positive thing. I say I'm saying direct actuation, meaning in future you'll be doing indirect actuation. Don't be surprised when you get there, or when, eventually. So these are the stuff that you need to highlight, obviously, uh, the, the three-way solenoid valve and the direct actuation. Now we get to the exercise. Average crates are checked for completeness with the help of an inspection unit. Where's that inspection unit? We don't we, we can't see that inspection unit here. Uh, incomplete crates are pushed off the roller conveyor by pressing a push button. So basically, whatever system that they are using, it gives you some sort of a vision, then you you you'll see whether the products are faulty or they are not. Then you if they're faulty. Starting, then off we go. We move them from that roller conveyor to another. The lovely part about this is that we already have a software somewhere whereby we'll be using this illegal one. Yeah? We have it here, but we didn't license it because we are. I'm trying to get there, the ten licenses to work. Please don't don't crack the software in the computers here. Do it on your own personal computer. As you can see, it's not activated, you see? So, yeah. But I want it still to be available in the lab so that I can use it to teach. So these are roller conveyors, basically. So what is happening is they are able to push off items to another section on the roller. On, on this uh, from this roller conveyor uh, you'll push with something similar to this B. so this can can push basically see and then although I don't know which I'm trying to look at the one where I can use to change direction. Maybe this. Okay, so I'm assuming, yeah? Maybe we can use this one, sit here. B. Something like this. And now this is not it. No, 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 no. Right. I don't know which, which conveyor to use to push off stuff, but I know you can push off stuff from this one. Maybe, maybe what maybe what you can do is just put another conveyor in here, and then you rotate it. No, oh, but this one is too big. Two meters is fine, right? There, yeah, like that, and maybe it's like this. Yeah, and then this guy sit somewhere here. 
So you do interesting things. Just tell them at home. So, and we have a box. No, that's not the, the crate. Yeah. So now, so this crate, when it gets here, maybe the sensor version does its own thing. Then your, when your job is to press a push button, and then things fall off. Yeah? And you can even simulate this, if not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Uh, push up, let's push it. Ta. You see, something like this. And then it goes back. Yeah. It does push successfully off the conveyor belt. And then, let's say maybe, because you can turn on almost anything here you want. The conveyor belt can move also. Which conveyor belt am I moving? Oh, I must do this. Or oh, it's going the opposite direction. I must flip it around. Ta, ta. So, oh, I always forget the place. Then we stop, inspect, then like, ah, don't want it. Then it goes out. So, and then obviously maybe somebody can come and make sure that the stuff are properly done. Like that. So, this is what they're trying to say. We will be doing this on PLCs, ne? So, but you just press the button. I am sure that once you release the button, the system must retract. You just press and you press again and then, no, no, you press, it extends, you release, it retracts, ne? So that's what I'm thinking. Let's read. Let's say, by pressing a push button, eh? they didn't say what will happen after you release the button. So we normally tell you, you press the push button and you release. And if it needs to carry over, it must carry over. But don't stress about that. The chest will always reveal or tell you what you need to do. Okay? Then here, Okay, you do the, I, I, I like highlighting, like this thing of not being able to highlight the problem. This thing can highlight, uh -uh. no, no, this thing is baby. Me, I want to open this thing, guys, sorry. I'm, I'm a typical, like, yeah. If I improve every year the stuff that I do in the lab, but at times I'm like, no ways, the old school way is better. Others, they prefer paper-based stuff. I prefer, I do why? All right. I thought it doesn't want to work. It's fine, just continue. I'll see it after an hour. All right, so, where was? After pressing the push button, so they, they're telling you, after pressing, and then incompletely filled beverages crates are pushed off by the piston rod of a single acting cylinder. Ne? When the push button is released, so once you press, you need to understand what will happen after that. When, when, once you release the push button, what must happen? The piston rod is retracted to the rear end position. Ne? So you press, then you let go, and you must retract. After that, it must do what the trap after that. So, general conditions single acting cylinder will be used. Uh, the system is controlled by means of a push button. Uh, in the event of power failure, the cylinder piston rod should be retracted to the rear end position. So, some of the stuff here. Obviously, I take them, compose a nice test. I won't say you must use a virtual valve. No, 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 no. I put a scenario. I'll give you my previous tests because I always change them. Even if I repeat, you mostly like not to see. And yeah, I always randomize. <clears throat> so I'll give you how I set up these things. But what they are trying to say is, 
you must have a solenoid valve which is a three two way valve so you come here and read solenoid valve hey guys there's something that i must teach you a valve aka tap that you must know that it's a tap boom beep straight a valve is a tap then the moment they say solenoid it means that it's an electrically controlled tap, not the one at home. Ne? The concept is different from the switches, the electrical switches. Ne? When it comes to their normal state, ne? we have normally open and normally closed valve. The same concept is used globally for switches and, 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 and push buttons. Ne? but they oppose each other because let's do this when i put them nicely you will see the concept this one this one is closed okay this one is open open and then this one is closed and closed yeah i'm putting the comparison nicely Back to back, so that you can see the difference between an electrical switch and a solenoid, aka foam B. Ne? A chap is called foam B in Africa, ne? so I'm accommodating everyone. Okay. So, yeah. uh, when a when foam B ne, is open, what will happen? With water, with air, with hydraulic fluid, even with even with petrol, what will happen when the valve is open? What will happen? It will flow. In electrical, what will happen? Crime with what? Will flow. Not open. <laughs> yes, it will turn off. So you are able to buy a switch near yeah, from a store as a normally open or as a normally closed. Let's say you open, you bought it as a normally open. As you can see here, it's open. The current, the, they say the electrical circuit is not complete when the, the, the switch is open, meaning that it will need to be closed before there could be current flowing. So a tap, water will flow because the valve mechanism is just to block the water and open for the water. But with electrical connection, once the connection is open, there's no flow of electricity. They are opposite. Keep that in mind. So, on the other side, again, we are talking about a normal state, its or no, its original condition. On the on the valves now, you are able to go. In order for you to not strain your valve, you need to understand that its normal condition must be what? Yeah. Understand? Otherwise, you're gonna strain your valve and you end up breaking. If your valve works in a place where by default water must pass, and only you would close it when you maintain, then what kind of a valve must you buy? Uh, it's kind of a cage valve. Actually, it is, it is a cage valve. Whether known open or closed, that's what I'm trying to say. Which one must you buy? Open or closed? Remember, it's only it's only closed when it's maintained. Which one must you buy? The open one. Well, that's my common sense. Nobody told me that. But I feel like it must be an open one. So that when you close it, you put effort to close it. Then when you open it, it, it is its own state. Because remember, it's a reaction to open in a, in a closed bag. And that's why you find our taps at home tend to malfunction. But nevertheless, let's leave it there. <clears throat> so now, 
Now, since when you appreciate the, 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 the conditions now, we said when we press the push button, oh, they must be there. If, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We said when when we push the push button, yeah? and in fact, this one are these push buttons or the uh, I want the normal push button, push button, this is a push button, make wave break. Can't see the break, so it's fine. Uh, this one is a dent, I want to use normal, yeah. Oh, here's it. Mm. I want us to select parts now for this question. So talk about push button. When I press the push button and I let go, I press to connect. When I let go, it disconnects. So which push button must be we take? Open or closed? Open. Okay. Place our push button there. Leave it there. On the valves now. Tap water. For air. What must happen? When I press, does the, 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 the air stops or it flows? When I press, it flows, yeah? So it means we're taking a normally. Are you here? Hmm? So we take normally. The air must be closed. All right. So now, connect this to there and then that to there. All right, so I'm just going to delete this. There's an error I want to sh show you guys. You see, one and three, they are like the, 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 the pipe, yeah? the connection is crossing three and it goes to one. Normally, that will create an error. And if you can solve it in a test, I would recommend that you just submit your work. Don't dwell much on errors you can't resolve. There are marks into just submitting something that you not know, that exists and that, that can breathe oxygen. So all you need to do is to put more skin on it. And try to be correct as far as possible. But if you can't resolve your issues, then strive to finish up your work with those issues. But I'm gonna penalize you either way, but at least you might not fail. So to resolve this error, you can either move the valve and make it aligned like this, or you can come here, drag here, and drag down, so that we don't cross path with another uh, uh, thing there. It is called three two way valve, then yeah? three two way valve, then yeah? we'll cover that as we start to demonstrate it. Why they say three two way valve, right? So let's get to the electrical part of this thing now. On the electrical part, we have your 24 volt and your zero volt, then. Yeah? And you have that that push button. We we'll still remember the push button. We have that push button. Yeah. It's so unfortunate we can't connect this there. Yeah. We can't connect your electricity there. But if we come here and we do the wiring. Yeah. I will do the wiring on, on, the, on the camera there. I think I must do the wiring. So that you can see. So since what we can't connect from the electrical part to the valve, yet in real life we can. So I'm gonna show you the difference. Yeah? So from here, what do I want? I want my My relay, no, 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 my solenoid valve, it becomes like this. So this, this, 
component description represents the the solenoid. Remember, we are talking about the valve and its solenoid. So here, this represents that solenoid of your valve. I don't know why they call it solenoid, valve solenoid. Oh yeah, valve, when you say valve solenoid, it makes sense. Not solenoid valve, yeah. So I think there's a bit of a difference there. The terminology, they change. I have that feeling. Let's let's check this. Yo, what are you? Solenoid valve. Do you, you see the difference? The solar solenoid valve and a valve solenoid. Do you understand this? So this solenoid belongs to a valve. And then on the other side, we are saying a solenoid valve, meaning a valve that has a solenoid in it, meaning it is operated through a remember your tap. It's a manually controlled tap at home. You can remove that thing and put a solenoid. You know that solenoid can open and close. So, and again, the solenoid, they have two conditions. They open fully, they close fully. Okay? You can get them as analog, whereby they vary the opening and the closing. And then we will do that under. That's why I said I'm going to push you guys to up to analog uh, signals because you are special. I can. So now this, you connect it like this, uh, connect like that, and you connect like that. So then we were supposed to connect this and that. The, the solenoid, the valve, the solenoid is here. You now give it a name. You say, I, sh I forgot how I was describing this thing in the past. Let's just say sol underscore table. The book will give it a different description. I prefer to give it so. I'm preparing you for 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 PLCs. We label things differently. Then. So I prefer to work like this. I prefer to work like this. Yes. Uh, so in this in this electric circuit, why do you have a valve solenoid that controls the opening and closing of the circuit if you have a switch that does the same thing? A switch is to induce. Remember, if you put a solenoid here and you put a 24 volt battery here, you connect that solenoid. If it's a normally closed, it will open. And if it's normally open, it will close. So basically, you won't have control. Soon as there's electricity, it will, it will work. But you want to have control. So now that solenoid, you come and label it here, sol underscore zero. You click enter there. So in the computer world, in the computer world, we are unable to connect the two, the electricity part and the, 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 the valve part. We, 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 we code them separately so that they can become independent uh, circuitries. So the fact is there is a borderline. In real life, the borderline is, is bridged with a real cable. But in the, in, the, in the world of computers, we need to differentiate the two worlds. The reason why you do this like this, that they are kind of showing you that there is another way of programming this. You can go to a PLC right now through what they call Easy OPC, yeah? and connect this with a PLC and code it from a PLC. That's what it means. It's simple, yeah. But I don't like to do the, this this 
of uh, using the PLC to, to extend the cylinder and stuff like that. No, 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 no. I want to introduce the whole cylinders on a 3D machine whereby it, it makes more sense. Because you have this 3D picture, you can't simulate it, you only simulate the cylinder. It doesn't blend well, man, with an African child. African child deserves pictures, moving stuff. Because I know that you've been told in primary about a computer, you only saw it when you get here. And I want to bridge that gap. Because you can't imagine what you don't know, honestly speaking. And it's not just seen not to know anything. You understand? We're not exposed to such things. <clears throat> so now you press start, and there's, there's the, the dark blue color represents your air going in. Yeah? It is compared for you have the compressor and the air service unit every time you do your circuits. Should you not have it, I'm going to fail you. Because it means that if you don't have the solar, uh, the, the SMS you need, you are supplying your, okay, you are, you are supplying water into your component. I was thinking of, of, of your WF and stuff like that, okay? I was gonna say something that makes no sense at all. So yeah. Uh, you must have that SAVC unit. And if you don't have it, I fail you. So now when you press the push button, the solenoid valves get induced. And obviously the solenoid valve normally is on top of this, then it extends. Then when I let go of the push button, it retards. Next. You see that? So there are different forms of switches. Yeah? I want to explore another type of a switch. I'll delete this switch and add a different kind of a switch. This switch, when you press it and you let go, what happens? You see, I'm away from the computer. Yes, it, uh, we normally call it a selector switch. It is able to retain the signal or pledge. Yeah? One day I was reading the, the door, the door mechanism thing. They say the door latches. It's horrible. <laughs> So now I thought that latching is, is a only PLC related thing. It's electrical, but anything that latch on basically. So when it does this, it latches, it, it, it holds on. The term, the reason why I'm busy repeating it, everything on PLC latches. The moment you go to PLC, you better be prepared that the circuits must latch on PLC. Then when you press again, it let go. So you can obviously make the comparison yourself uh, to see what is what and how it works and stuff like that, right? I said I want to bridge the gap between how these things are connected in real life and are connected here. Let me get my cables and all that. I don't need my cables, but I so show you. So, yes, see. Uh, if the actuator doesn't move when we put the switch, what should we do? Can you press my actuator? 
Guys, uh, I'm gonna hit with my view here. Can I zoom out? Wait, no, 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 no. All right, guys. Hello. On on the on this, ne? Push button is like this. So we we'll have our 24 volt coming in. Thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. So this is our push button. Let's say we have this connected to there. So we'll connect it from the power supplier. So for now, you label your solenoid, ne? but in real life, you don't label it 
you take a cable from your from your push button and you take it to your solenoid just like that so you wire directly so this is your solenoid that you need to label from your push button on the computer so from your push button you label that solenoid valve and you also you must make sure that the labeling are the same so basically this is how it works basically you need to wire it physically the solenoid is wired physically because we are doing electrical stuff you will see when you get to your arduino uh, project you will be doing arduino I don't know which other university is doing Arduino. Uh, so far, I know us. So yeah, you will be doing a project. <laughs> Self-taught, unfortunately. I don't know how to use Arduino, but at the end of the semester, you guys will be gurus for that project. It's using advanced coding, not this uh, structured coding that we're using. But don't stress. Don't stress. Okay, let's go back to do another exercise. My guy, hey, really sorry about that. Uh, let me know if you are really hurt so that, uh, you know. Uh, same guy. <laughs> I'll hurt myself every day if I could claim you. Know, I'll jump off the building. <laughs> Exercise number two. Let's do the second exercise. On the second exercise, we expected to understand a double acting cylinder. I hardly offer a test on single acting cylinders. I hardly, completely hardly, hardly, hardly. Hey, I don't know what would have happened if I give you a test in a single active cylinder. I, I don't know. Ah, it's just too simple, this, the, the single active. I'll try it maybe, but now, nah, just expect a double active cylinder. So, uh, now we are still doing, we are still continuing with a direct actuation. There is no way I'll give you a direct actuation test. No way. Unless you are on your hospital bed and uh, I have to make up something for you to pass. But no way, never. Always indirect. So whatever that you are doing here, we are just introducing you to electro pneumatics. The real electro pneumatics will start as soon as we do the indirect actuation. So now, the gate is open when a push button is pressed. Okay. Okay. In QK. Ah, oh, I didn't schedule anyone. Oh, yeah. I, my timetable doesn't say there's anyone there. I, where are they from? Which which department are they from? No, 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 no. We we, we have labs there. According to our timetables, there's no one who's supposed to be there. And our labs are ending at 12. And there's going to be another departmental uh, lab there as well for mining auto care. All right, no, 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 no.
All right. Fish, there are some guitars that you want to hold that side. But uh, they will go to machine. You know what to do. So now, here, you will. Okay, where's the product? Where's the question here? Here's the question here. And actually, okay. Numerous pipes have to be opened and closed in a water treatment system with the help of a shut off device. Ne? So, an actuation option for the shut off valve will be sought out by means of a test setup. Okay? They need to tell us what they want. The gate is open when a push button is pressed. Okay? When the push button is released, the gate is once again closed. Okay? So, a double action cylinder will be used and the cylinder will be controlled via a push button in the event of power no that one is fine we know it so compare directly actuated and pilot actuated solenoid valve describe the function of the solenoid valve okay this one they didn't say much about this let me just go straight to the answer oh, it's not that much. Oh, only difference is that. Oh, the question is dumb. I don't know what it's for. But let's do it. We are expected to put a five two way valve. Remember, uh, other than five two way valve, before we talk about five two way valve, I need to stress this. The moment you use three double acting cylinder, you must use a five two way valve and three two way valve. Okay, let's make a comparison quickly. A quick comparison. Quick comparison will be like this. You see a double acting cylinder, single acting cylinder, it uses the three two way valve. This side we're using what? A, 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 a five two way valve. Now it's time for me to explain what is a five two way valve and what is a three two way valve. But before I do, let me rather wrap up this thing. You see the dot here where I split? It's more like a cheap piece. Yeah? Ah, you guys are like, you understand this thing. It's a cheap piece. Yeah. Whenever they split like this, I use a cheap piece. A cheap piece to connect multiple stuff, but but in a nice lab we have a distribution block. In real life, you can either use a distribution block or you can use a TPs. So TPs are gonna have a lot of them. For the distribution blocks, one distribution block can connect up to seven. Eight, eight devices. So, look what happens on the five two way valve. Remember, I said a double acting cylinder. You need to 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 make it to tension it. Ne? You need to put tension on it. So that you are guaranteed that it's at its end retracted position. So they do it by a valve. The valve is releasing air on one side so that it can sit in position and it doesn't move. Because if the cylinder is loose, it can just extend. Let's say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vibrating system, yeah? and then the cylinder is not fully retracted. 
or is, we don't have a, a compression that keeps it at the end retracted position, it will end up extending. It's like you, you just take a round shaft you know, with an opening, put a metal inside or like maybe a, a rod, as it vibrates, that will eventually come out, isn't it? So, so now you need to put A and keep it in that position for safety reasons. Because some products are so strong to a point that they can bend this rod. So every month you're going to buy new rods. So you don't want that. You don't want that. So you need to keep it in the end retracted position. We have, we have phases now. Before we talk about phases, let's introduce another tool. This tool is called Snip. Snipping tool. I want to snip this thing. Uh, snip, come on, come snip off oh, there. Yeah. Okay. I can't write with anything else except this. When I I was a, 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 an advocate for touch pads, the writing pads, for a long time, the university didn't want to buy us because they not ready to do hybrid. Now I do hundred percent hybrid. Don't care. I'll never stop recording labs. I'll never stop doing hybrid. So my labs are fully hybrid except the tests. So basically you can attend wherever you are in the world, but you must practice because these things, they chow when they come to tests. You must practice. I don't do 100% attendance stuff and stuff like that. I don't really care where you are. As long as you practice on a regular basis, that one matters. So. Three to a valve. We have terminals, which are the openings. Yeah? And we have one, two, and three. Yeah? So these are your three terminals. Three. And then the two comes from phases. Yeah? You remember the first phase, we say that thing is normally open or normally closed. Then when you actuate it, it goes to the second phase now, which now it closes when you actuate it. Okay? So we have phases. So these things, both of them, they have phases. They have two phases. So this one, it has five terminals, one, two, three, four, and five. Five terminals, And then it has two stages of actuation, meaning phases of actuation. So that's where it got the name five two-way valve. And then this one, three, that's where it got its three two-way valve. Simple. So when you actuate, yeah, this the one. They are inlet most of the time. Ne? Guys, you can go wherever. First of enemies and, and wherever. You will find that some of the valves they operate like that, especially for you much. One is where your input is. Ne? For air supply, you supply to that valve through one, yeah? and then E2 normally, it's your first output. That's when it releases your signal. Yeah? So this one also two, but this two is currently connected to keep our at its end position, our cylinder at its end position. Otherwise this will just move around and it won't be controlled. Okay, and then by default that is open. Yeah, this one is open by default, and then you should be able to take this phase as it is and bring it on top of this phase. What do I mean when I say that? 
You see here, this is your one. And you see here, this is your four. And then here, this is your two. So once we, 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 you take this one here, it means this thing will connect this side and connect there. So if you take here, this is your one, your one normally is going to coincide with this. And when you, you now take this connection here, this will then op be open. It shows you that your, 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 your actuation phase it will be open. When you actuate it, it will be open. And then your one this side is closed. At your initial stage of your, 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 your inlet supply here, it's closed. But when you, when you combine the two, the three is going to be the one that is closed. And then the one will be open and the two will release the air. So what is the three, four? And the five? You see it facing downwards. It's facing downwards. It means that exhaust. You exhaust through three. You're most likely not to be able to see it with your naked eye most of the time. It's embedded inside that exhaust sheet. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the, its outputs here are two. Yeah? So it needs to exhaust twice. It needs to exhaust when you, you, Look at here, look, look, look here, look here, look here. Uh, once it's connected, the two is going to be here. Okay? The two is going to be here. Then it's going to exhaust here. Yeah? And at the current moment, it's exhausting at four there. You will see it when we demonstrate it nicely now, now. Just now. So, oh, you can press it directly there if you want to for testing purposes. When I press, Look, it goes there, it extends. You see that? When I let go, it goes there and it retracts. Yeah? They mentioned valves, shut off valves. Yeah? They don't necessarily specify what does that shut off valve. The shut valve they're talking about is this one, the one way control valve. The one-way control valves, is, they are designed to control the speed when you, when you, when you, you extend. At times, you want to extend quickly. At times, you want to extend gradually. So you want to introduce yourself to the valves. The valves are only connected facing 270 degree. You turn them, then you connect them. And the reasoning behind the valves is that, let's see. This one, I need to zoom it first. Can I zoom? Oh, can I zoom? All right. Okay, let's zoom this and try to explain that what does the valve do? Right? So the valve, once you face it down, yeah, uh, it has this section over here. This is a yeah, it's manually controlled. This one you, you, you use to regulate the flow of air. And then, then it, it, air meaning that air comes like this. Yeah? And if air passes like this, the ball will block it. You see the ball is, is connected to the valve there. The, the ball will press here and it will stop it from going this time. It's only for us to come down through here, like this. 
But opposite of that, the air is free to reverse. So the air can come and push up the ball and go and come out and go wherever without any regulation. You get it? Regulation. So that's why it needs to sit on 270 degrees. That's its normal operating position. So you turn it around. So this valve, this this one way, one way flow control. So meaning that you can only control in one direction. Okay, did you understand that? You can control it only in one direction. Okay, really. Right. right. So, uh, now we're going to another interesting part. Which one, remember when we extend, you see now, the air for, the reason why we're positioning it like this, and yeah, now, 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 now it's very interesting. That's the reason why we're putting it on 270. Now I have the valid reason. I was always thinking, imagining things. But now it makes sense. Uh, let's let's short this this part. Very interesting. Look here. We turn this to red, red pen. Look here. This must always uh, have a flow. I know. This must always. Flow for safety reasons. It must not be affected. That's the, 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 the air from two by default must never be affected. It must always flow. So when you put this uh, cylinder at 270 degrees, it's gonna get air flow here so that the cylinder can always be fully retracted. Otherwise the cylinder will be loose. If the if the cylinder can if air can go under the, the this can be regulated, it means that you won't have hundred percent retraction on the cylinder. That's why we're putting it on two hundred and seventy degree angle. All right. So in that, in that case, what does it tell us about the whole shenanigan here? It means that this one. Since well, it's only regulated going down, no? it's for the extend. It regulates the extend. This one regulates the extend. So, who for? Let's say, let's say we actuate it. Look, for will travel like this, and one it won't be impacted here. It will able to push the ball, and it will go and it will push it will push the cylinder then then there's there's vacuum here already again the vacuum will go back and be regulated here you see that so this so if you if you 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 you, you twist this you regulate here it meaning that you're going to affect the extension but when you regulate this side when you regulate on the other side, okay, let's delete everything. If you maybe they must buy me a touch screen one when I write nicely. I know I'm going really to prepare. I like doing electronic stuff. I'm paperless. I don't know if you really have a class list, guys. I'm paperless. I don't know why there's no notes. At Oh, <laughs> I'm paperless. Cut only. People don't understand. I'm one advocate for industry for pointing. So now, when you want to regulate the the the, the retraction, 
you will regulate it through this one because it must be regulated here. So it will be regulated over here. So remember, once the slip is extended, maybe let's extend it and take a screenshot. Uh, is there something that I want to show you? Hey, Saul, Saul, I'm forgetting you now. Hey, I want to think about Saul Penduga now. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, right? You see there's an opening here. You see there's an opening here. Something that I want to take there. Uh, let's take a screenshot of that. So now, when we, when we retract, the air won't be uh, won't be regulated this side. So meaning we will have a, a, a guaranteed pushback. Even when the system is fully retracted, it will have a guarantee pushback without any regulatory stuff. Yeah? Because the regulation makes the, the, the cylinder push yeah, to be weak, meaning you can still play with it. But now, the air that is currently here, that's the one that we are going to use to regulate, uh, no, 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 that's wrong. That's the air we're gonna use to regulate the retraction. But once we are fully retracted, we're gonna have a full process with, that is not regulated. So they're gonna be air here that is not regulated, meaning that the strength of the piston it's going to be the same when it's fully retracted. But once we are pushing, the air that is coming out, that was, was already on, on, on the cylinder. Remember, the cylinder is a vacuum. You, 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 you supply air in the cylinder, and it remains there. And you need to use that air to push out. So while we are retracting the air out through the valve, we are, this through this valve, the valve number five here, yeah. It, it, it's been exhausted out. And then with this one, when you're going forward, the air, you because when you go forward, the air is going to go like that, and it's going to be retracted at three. The air will be at three here. The air that was on your first phase of your cylinder, it's going to be exhausted out. So now let's change the speeds now. I want to change the speed for retracting. Again, we said the one for retracting is this one. So let's, let's lower the speed and let's see. You see now it's moving slow, but it goes forward quickly, comes back slow. So at times I might say to you, it, might, it must extend it must retract slowly. That's where the one way control valve will come. And I can take a minimum of 20% of your overall mark if you fail to distinguish the two. I use penalties. Your work will be worth of 85, for instance. And I'm like, no penalty. All the Spec issues are the reason why we have no change. Spec issues are the reason why we have this corruption, things exploding and stuff like that, because of the wrong spec. You are basically a corrupt individual. You are buying wrong things. Why I'm saying you're corrupt? It's because of no one will know your intent. You understand? I don't know if they intentionally buy their own things or not buy at all. But the payment is paid in cash. You come with Toyota ATOs and then you take the rest of the money. That's pure corruption. But in the engineering world, you can call it an engineering mistake, but it will have serious repercussions. And at some point, unfortunately, or fortunately, in South Africa, they don't take the operating license like in other countries. In other countries, whatever that you spend, the name is on it. But I know when it comes to COC matters, your name is on it. 
They will come for you. Yes, sir. So, you Okay, you when you come here, you can see it it come it brings up something like a scale at the yeah, like a scale, yes. And then you start to to increase the speed. Yeah? I'm 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 putting it on two hundred percent now. So let's test the other speed now. We're gonna come and affect the other one. So this one in the front, you see how the extending is happening quickly. The extend is happening quickly now, but the re okay. Wait, wait, wait. We're not gonna be able to just put it here. Right? No man. What am I? I must reduce this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so let's see. All right. See now. So it just compresses that air that's supposed to. Okay, compress it and release it slowly. But the one that is pushing, the pushing force is still the same. Because yeah? remember, there is air now here. When we retract, we are pushing out this air. That's the one that you must, that, that's the one that you must uh, uh, regulate. If you don't regulate this one, regulate this one, you're going to have a problem. Your piston won't even reach where it must go. So here we have a guaranteed push. And in essence, it is recommended to use one uh, control, especially when I test. Okay, I'll, I'll use one. I'll require you to use one. So you need to appreciate them, the two uh, 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 things. Every child must appreciate them. Right, let's do one last exercise and we call it a game. Um, with the single acting actuator, if yes. you push the one way ground, mm -hmm. it, it controls the spring, the return, or sorry, the retracting area. So it doesn't control the distinction. Yes, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only controls the yeah the return. That's correct. It only controls the return. Because the return, since when we are using a spring act, it will happen very quickly. Although Although I think you can put it in a normal, a normal connection. Let's try it. Let's do it as a normal connection, like here. I uh, won't do, do 180, no, 90. Huh? Oh, this is like 270. I want to do 180 of this. Ah. So here, Let's see. Let me wait over time. Okay, I messed up. You see, I messed up there. Uh, we can just delete this. Take this one a little bit higher and do that. Please. Right. So. So it doesn't generate enough force. You see that? Because I'm regulating, I'm regulating it from this direction. It doesn't generate enough force. So it's not wise to do it. So if you only put a shuttle valve or one shuttle valve, maybe using a double actuator. Oh yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so this one I want to test you on, 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 on. I believe you can put in any scenario from, from looking at this, you can put it in any scenario. Why you should put it you might use a single acting cylinder in your plant. But I don't recommend people buying single acting cylinders for their plants. You know why? If that plant you were you were you were the one specking it, it means that your company is building it, then if you buy a single acting cylinder, in future you might not be able to do anything with it should you need a double acting cylinder. So the best buy would be a double acting cylinder instead of a single acting cylinder. So sometimes you need benchmark a customizability in a way. So there are at times 
they would say to you which one to buy between a three two way valve and a five two way valve five two way valve generally it comes expensive but there's one factor for the five two way valve it will do the function of a five two way valve and a three two way valve why and how because it is customizable let me show you how So when I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking to people who are going to be specking from next year, if you're lucky enough. You can be a sales engineer, you'll be required to spec. You can be a project engineer, you'll be required to spec. You can be just a maintenance engineer, you'll be required to spec. Mechanical engineers always spec. I've never seen any, anyone that can spec, like you are required to spec. And you're good to that as well. Right, so originally, a five two way valve comes out like this. Ne? Oh. Because I can see myself here. Sorry, thanks. Man. So, originally, a five two way valve comes like this. You see how many terminals are there? There are five. Let's not call them holes. Let's just say terminals or openings. They are fine. If I am tired, if I don't want one of them, I can block it like this. And I can customize it the way I want. Even this one here. It's been blocked several times. So you can customize it. But the, the, the three two way valve, you can't do any of that. Uh, okay. Sometimes these guys, they don't offer me three-way valve. They offer me a. So meaning that I was smart. I have it in the form of a push button instead. So this is a three-way valve. So one is the inlet, two is outlet, three is the exhaust. You can't customize it further than this, but. I have a five two way valve. A five two way valve, you can turn it to a three two way valve by blocking one of the either the four or the two. Then it becomes a three two way valve. So a five two way valve, the best thing about them is they are customizable. So obviously, once you want to start to customize, you must ask your managers in the company you'll be working on to take you to the advanced course, yeah, pneumatics. But the, the future for us is so many short courses. They just ask you, do you know how to code this? Do you know how to wire this? And then you say yes, and then you do it from that thing. You don't necessarily need any course. YouTube is enough to learn anything that you need. From my side, because I'm industrial, I'm, um, they don't look at me as a person who can do the stuff. So normally I have to produce certification of a lot of stuff. Even electrical stuff, you guys you know, don't necessarily need to have any form of certification to do electrical stuff. Because PLCs are electric, basically. Although it's small uh, electrical stuff. Okay, let me change the view to that one. Right. Last question. I'm tired now. Did I get it right? I didn't check. Oh, it's correct. What do they All right, you will be able 
to appreciate indirect actuation. Indirect actuation. Now we are doing electronic according to my standard of testing. Indirect actuation and a function of a relay. So there's a relay when we're dealing with uh, indirect actuation. So when we say a relay, what comes in your mind? Honey. Are you sure you're on, in, you're on uh, the final year? Yeah? Hi, guys. You don't, you don't relay like that, guys. The electrical relay, the common one you're going to face or you're going to come across when you work with motors, it's a contactor. So a relay is, is a contactor, basically. It's used to start motors most of the time. So when you deal with PLCs, PLCs generate what is called a digital signal. Then digital signal can power anything. Even as you know most of the time. So you will need the relay to give you that power you need to power your motor. So that's where relay comes into play or contactors. It's designed to power stuff. So Half liter cans are filled with wall or ceiling paint at a manual workstation. The lids are press fitted with a pneumatic press. You paint cans, day one, you know it can open it by hand. Must use all the, 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 the screwdrivers, knives, and stuff like that. So it's been pressed. That's why it's not easy to open. So as you can see, here's a machine here. So you have to press a button, then something happens. The cans are manually inserted into the press, meaning that there's an opportunity for putting them electronically. So that's a story for another day. Uh, after pressing a push button, the press Cylinder is advanced and the lid is press fitted. Okay. When the push button is released, the press is retracted to its initial position. The seal is then removed. A double active cylinder will be used. Control of a uh, cylinder will be executed indirectly by means of a push button. You know, these guys, they, they, they're just making a mistake. They, I don't know. The guy did this, I think maybe he's an industrial engineer. I don't know. You should have just tell them, you should have just made this thing to be more interesting. The push button that you are actuating, okay? you could have just said it's a 24 volt. And then the presser, okay? the, the, the mechanism that works on the presser requires maybe 500 volts. So that it can give you the, a, a sense of why are we using a relay. Because now we come with it. With a 12 volt push button for controlling a motor, maybe a 500 watts, uh, sorry, 500 volts. So you'll be able to see why I'm using a contactor. Because a contactor, the electrical connection on the contactor comes directly from the TV box. Yeah? And then no electrical connection from your, from, your, 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 from your push button comes from a, a, in a, in a, in an electronic device such as a PLC. So obviously you can't run a 500 volt with that direct connection. So you need to up it a bit. So now you connect with a PLC. I don't have a, a proper example, but let me show you, let me try, let me try to show you something.
lava, but electron rheumatics is that they coincide with PLC. So bad. Like, you know. Oh, ah, this is not picking out. Damn. All right, let's do this. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, right. So I have a push button here, a green one and a red one and LED, two LEDs. Yeah. So the, 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 the push buttons are, 20, are rated at 24 volts. So the PLC can read the 24 volt. Yeah. So when I press the, 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 the push button. The PLC read that uh, command and then execute it to the LEDs. LEDs here are 24 volt, yeah? but the signal from the PLC cannot power even mere uh, 24 volt indicator lines. It cannot. It's not enough. So then you need a relay. Closer so that you can see. So you need the relay. So this relay is connected. It is it is customized to suit four or uh, four items. So it can control four devices. One relay can control four devices. So now, if I needed to push something of 240 volt, I will need a relay of 240 volt and connect it to the power source. When I go to the big bosses, then the motors, same thing. We we'll use a contactor to do the connection. The three phase, the whatever phases, I don't know much about contactors. I'm still learning them as well. Because I, I, I go with the notion as long as you're an engineer, teach yourself everything you want to know. So I'm still learning them. One day I will power all our power with this. And a PLC. I hope I don't explode. But I've been exploding in the lab. I'll just call a mechanical uh, electrical guy to help me. So <clears throat> they want us to do indirect actuation, right? Hey, I must display, otherwise that thing. Uh, uh, oh, display, all right? Uh, what do they want us to understand? The relay, yes, we want to do that. Uh, this is not important. A uh, means of push button and indirect actuation, right? So, what I'm not sure of is whether the cylinder is a double empty cylinder or a single empty cylinder. Uh, let me confirm that with the memo so that I don't waste time thinking and making a decision. Oh, I like to see. So now everything here remains, and then this one is direct actuation. It directs from from the power source to the actuator. But now we want to do indirect actuation. Things start to change. I like that bit. This one can buy. I'm using the one with the dent yeah, because of like, yeah, I want, yeah, I'm using a selector switch because I want to explain whatever that I'm doing as I do it. So I think this one connects directly there, meaning the, the, the switch connects directly to there, I guess. So now we're going to start by a relay. So this is how we're going to demonstrate that. So go away. There's a relay there. Connect, connect, and connect. A common approach to do this 
uh, that I've seen from my late Dr. Muyengwa, he would copy this and, and connect it like this. So you, you would turn this around, uh, forgot which way is it that you normally do, things 180 or two different. Wow. <laughs> so so that you can easily connect from there so from here from here you must connect there but you don't put it here you use what is called where is that symbol general switches yeah a changeover switch And obviously, which direction is it? This thing is it 290 or 2818? 18? Oh, 180. Ah, Let's see this. So you connect like this. As long as you're connecting to zero, guys, honestly speaking, I don't think it matters much. But it kind of makes all that a way of connecting these things. Then obviously make, make everything straight, nicely aligned, you know. I'm sure that you're an engineer. Engineers are full of order, guys. Right. So if you want the system to be normally closed, yeah, you would connect like this. Then it's connected. You see that it's connected. But if you want it to be uh, normally open, connect like that. But something's wrong here. I think we'll make an error. Let's test it and see. Okay, then we label that. The labeling, this one is relay real <laughs> underscore zero. Relay zero. It's going to be the same as there. Relay underscore zero. So just say real. Thanks for relay. Relay number zero. Let's see. Yeah, I did notice that we're gonna have errors there. So hey, some errors. Some errors. I still recommend, I still say if you can't figure out your error continue trust me this is the most tedious thing you can try to resolve because it's like you can't expect it to be correct the, the first time around otherwise you just gonna see hell gonna rain on you badly Even when we do the practical connections, they tend to be too complicated. You see, I'm still having errors. So let's delete this one. Here, obviously, because I teach, I need to be able to spot where the errors are. <laughs> and the system is completed. Relay, relay. You see that? So we turn on the relay. We go to the changeover switch and then so normally this connection over here a relay is connected on a and two a1 and a2 that's where you put the digital signal and then the changeover switch is the one that is controlling the solenoid that's the one that is normally connected on a bigger circuit meaning a bigger main switch or something like that but over here, they've standardized everything to 24 volts. So it's not easy for you to kind of appreciate what really happens and stuff like that. So, but nevertheless, when we press this, it extends slowly. Okay, the slowness, you obviously remember, 
for elastic it's running slow. So, but it's no longer from there to there, as there, you see, it goes to Limpopo before it goes to Free State. But I deliberately use the wrong switch there, deliberately. Don't say why Nick uses the wrong switch. So I deliberately use the wrong switch. So even the switch, you can give it a name. Yeah? It will be maybe a start button. Let's see, can I label it? Aha. PB underscore start or start underscore PB. Anyhow, I don't have a problem. All right, it looks like that. Guys, thank you for your attendance. You've been a lovely audience. If... Ah, so, 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 so. All right, guys. Hello. Uh, on YouTube. This, I'm going to put it on my YouTube as well. And because they tend to disappear, and you guys don't know how to use Blackboard, and you end up not being able to find it. So I'll try to label it nicely under my, my, my YouTube channel, and I'll give it a nice name to show that it's today's date of our first lesson, exercise one, two, three, and also subscribe to my channel as well. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indirect way of donating, you know, of course, it's not like I say, give me 10 rands or whatever. The subscription is enough to, you know, to get me paid as well. So my my name and surname, Nicholas Maybella, you'll see all sorts of stuff that I do on that channel. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. See you on Tuesday, 8.5, I think. During automatic control time.